Hello dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterization, Lecture Number 7. I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue our discussions on scanning electron microscopy and uh, part number 7. Uh, so today's topic is resolution of images and depth of field and scanning electron microscopy. So let's proceed towards today's lecture. Our uh, lecture, we will start from a question that how fine can we see uh, with the SAM? So for that, uh, we have to consider uh, a width of 10 nanometers uh, in our scan. Uh, so that uh, corresponds to uh, this particular dimension and the uh, x that is equal to uh, 1 million dimension in x. So it's create a question that uh, if we can scan an area uh, with this much of dimension, so uh, with, with this we will almost be able to see the atom. Uh, so then again, we are asking the question that is it true that we can see the atom uh, with the scanning and the uh, scanning electron microscopy? So for that, uh, we have to remember that the image on the CRT consists of the spot uh, that is called uh, Fexel. So what is a Fexel? Fexel is basically uh, the basic unit and the and the image. Uh, and for that, uh, you have to consider an example. Uh, the image that you see on your uh, PC screen. So the image on your PC screen uh, that you can see is of the dimensions uh, 1024 times uh, 768 pixel. That corresponds to 0 0.25 uh, millimeter of pitch. So uh, that that is this much of the pixel. So this is just uh, I mean so a, uh, a hand for understanding the concept of the pixel. And you already know from the previous lecture about the pixel that what is pixel exactly means. So uh, you cannot have detail finer than one uh, pixel. I mean, we we already have detailed discussion on the pixel in some of our previous uh, lectures. So no need further discussion about the pixel. So again, the questions uh, that how fine can we see with the same? So we remember uh, the unadded human uh, cannot reliably resolve feature smaller than about 0 0.1 millimeters and so the diameter of the beam uh, and the CRT needed not be much smaller than this thus the diameter of the image point on the CRT is equal to 100 micron uh, the conjugate point on the specimen from which the image signal is produced is called the pixel uh, that we denote on P uh, and that we will have uh, that that will have a smaller diameters uh, depend upon uh, the magnification and for that we have a relations uh, that is for the pixel uh, we have a relation that is equal to uh, diameter divided by the magnification so here d means the diameter on the uh, CRT uh, that is equal to 100 micron or 100 uh, micrometers uh, uh, divided by uh, the magnification so uh, at low magnifications, I mean, uh, you can easily get the relations from this uh, uh, mathematical formula uh, somehow. So at low magnifications, uh, the resolutions of the image is determined by the pixel size. Uh, so by this, uh, at high magnifications, the beam diameter uh, limits the uh, resolutions. So we have a certain point here. Point number first is about the resolution of the images. Uh, that is, assume that there uh, the screen can display 1000 pixel, uh, pixel means the rest of the line. Uh, then you can uh, imagine that there are 1000 pixel on each rest of the line on the specimen. So the resolution is the pixel diameter on the uh, specimen surface. So that you can easily understand from this diagram. So here you can see that it's the pixel on the specimens. And uh, here, you, you, this, this is the specimens. So these are the are the pixel on the specimens, and it's it's a raster scan. And from here on, it's, it's a raster uh, pattern of the electron beam on the specimens. So from here on, we have a scan generators, and this is the the pixel on the cathode ray uh, tube. So these are the pixel. Uh, these uh, I mean, the, the, this is a square or rectangle. These are basically the, the pixel on the cathode ray tube. And this dark one, the dark one basically points towards the image of specimen on the cathode ray uh, tube. So that we will understand in details uh, in the coming slide. 
so here we are again uh, 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 the, again we have the formula that is pixel is equal to the diameter of uh, the uh, diameter on the CRT divided by the magnification so for the D we have the value uh, of the CRT uh, diameters uh, that is equal to 100 micron that is divided by uh, the magnification so again you know what is mean by P uh, P basically mean the diameter on the specimen and D actually mean uh, pixel diameter on uh, CRT and MHG basically stand for uh, the magnification and here is the relations uh, if the magnifications uh, is 10x then the uh, P will be equal to uh, 10 and if we have the magnification 1kx so then the, the P value will be uh, equal to 0 0.1 and similarly uh, if the magnification is 10 kx so the p value will be 10 nanometers and if it is 100 kx so the p value will be equal to uh, 1. point number two on the resolution of the image is uh, the optimum conditions for imaging is when the uh, when the escape volume of this uh, the signal concern are uh, equal to uh, the pixel size so what it mean uh, so for that you have to look on the pixel on the specimen. So this empty circle, this empty circle is uh, indicate uh, the pixel on the specimens, and uh, you can see it here uh, one uh, uh, circle, small circle is basically filled. So what it indicate? Uh, it's uh, the escape area of the emitted electron, uh, and it's of the same size as the pixel area on the specimen. So here you can see that all these uh, circles uh, they indicate the pixels uh, on the specimens and this is you know this dot this is the area so uh, escape area I mean from this you can easily understand that uh, the escape area of the emitted electron uh, and the same uh, it is the same size as the pixel area on the specimen So what it mean? It mean that uh, the image uh, you will have uh, the, the image will generate from here. So you can see the pixel on the cathode tube uh, exactly like uh, the one you can see it here. So you will, you will, you will have a clear image on the uh, CRT. So point number three, uh, signal will be weak uh, at the escape volume, uh, which depend on the beam size, is smaller than the pixel size. But the resolution is still achieved. So what it mean? It means that the image will be uh, noisy. So here you can see it here. I mean these are the pixels uh, on the specimens, and these are the escape area uh, of emitted electron. So uh, if this is smaller than the pixel area on the specimens, uh, so what will be the result? Uh, the result will be that uh, the image that will be generated on the uh, cathode cathode ray tube. Uh, so that image will be uh, uh, noisy so a uh, small beam size is needed for high resolution in this particular case so uh, that can decreases the uh, uh, the beam size by uh, number one by increasing uh, the chrome on the condenser lens and point number two is decreasing the working uh, distance i mean these are the two points by which if we have uh, the noisy image or we can say if the image is noisy, so beam size is needed for high resolutions. Uh, I mean, in these conditions, uh, beam size is needed for high resolution. So uh, for this, what actually we can do? Uh, so that can be done by decreasing the beam size. So how the beam size can be decreased? The beam size can be decreases by two means. Uh, the first is uh, by increasing the current on the condenser lens. And number two, decreasing the working distance. These are the two points by which we can uh, decrease the beam uh, size. And decreasing the beam size also decreases the beam current, and therefore the signal to noise uh, ratio gets uh, worse. Point number four. Uh, what is the point number four? You can see it here in the figure. Uh, that is, signal from different pixels will overlap at the escape volume. You can see it here. If the escape volume is larger uh, than the pixel size, I mean these are the pixel size. So this is the escape volume. So if it is larger uh, than the pixel size, then the image will appear out of focus. 
so the image will appear uh, out of focus on the CRT. So what it mean? It means that the resolution, uh, the resolution will be, uh, I mean, the resolution decreases with this. So point number five, uh, an extremely uh, good SAM uh, resolution can be a few nanometers. Uh, so the limit is set by the, uh, the electron probe size, which in turn depend upon the quality of the objective lens and uh, the electron gun. So here we have the relation between the magnifications and pixel diameter on the specimen. So if the magnification is 10, so what it means, it, it corresponds to the pixel diameter on the specimen uh, that is equal to uh, 10 uh, micron. And if the magnification is 100, so it corresponds to 1 micrometer. And if the magnification is 1000, so it corresponds to 0 0.1 pixel diameter on the uh, specimen. Uh, and so on, if you see towards 10,000, uh, so correspondingly the value for a uh, pixel diameter is also uh, I mean it will be uh, decreasing that is equal to 0 0.01 uh, micron and if it's 100,000 so for 100,000 that is equal to 0 0.001 micron or it corresponds to a uh, 1 uh, nanometer. And another concept uh, is that of the depth of field and the uh, scanning electron microscopy so what is mean uh, uh, depth of field? So for the depth of field, uh, we have to consider uh, this diagram. And for that, uh, we have to consider this, I mean, the pixel size that, that we have already mentioned on the uh, previous slide. So for that, we have to start our discussions. I mean, we have to, uh, I mean, uh, we have to understand all these facts that you can see it here. And then uh, you will come to know that what actually mean by uh, depth of uh, field. So one of the, uh, this is one of the greatest advantage of STEM. Uh, uh, that is, uh, I mean, it gave us the un uh, usually grab depth of field. Uh, so this mag, uh, I mean, this mag is possible to examine surface uh, much rougher and at a much higher magnification uh, than is possible with light microscope. So the reason for this great depth of field arises from the geometry of the beam optics. So the final lens of the SAM focuses the electron beam to a crossover at a plane of the best focus. So the beam diameter uh, increases as the beam coverage and uh, as the beam uh, converges and diverges above and below uh, this uh, plane. So here is uh, this plane is the, this the beam as uh, the beam coming from this lens aperture. Uh, so here is point from this point uh, it either converges uh, and uh, diverges so I mean here from here on you can see here uh, we have a point that is uh, we, we have a distance that is above uh, and also below so it's some distance uh, that is I mean you can also see it here that is d by 2 uh, so it's some distance d by 2 above and below you can see it here so above and also below this point so what happened uh, the focus plane, uh, the diameter of the beam becomes twice the pixel diameter for the magnifications uh, being used, uh, whereupon the signal from the adjacent pixel will live enough to cause the image to appear blur. So this is the result. Uh, I mean, here you can see it here. We have the blur image. And over the distance d, I mean, which is here, I mean, about this point, uh, I mean up and down so what happened is about this point over the distance D between these limit however the image will appear to be an acceptably sharp focus and so this distance is called the depth of field or uh, depth of uh, focus so what is mean by uh, the depth of field so depth of field is basically uh, the point uh, D uh, between the limit, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's the point uh, where the image will appear to be an acceptably sharp focus. Uh, uh, I mean, this is the point where uh, the, the image will be uh, will appear to be an acceptably sharp uh, focus. Uh, so that particular point uh, is called uh, the depth of field. So here you can see, you can easily understand uh, this uh, depth of field. 
so for the depth of field uh, that we denoted by d uh, it can lies here uh, i mean here you can see that it basically points toward this uh, and d is uh, basically the, here it can lies here in this particular uh, uh, point and it is basically correspond to this point and here you should uh, understand a difference between the d by 2 and d so d is basically uh, the distance uh, or uh, it corresponds to depth of field uh, which lies anywhere from this point unto this point so it's basically i mean just like we mentioned on the previous slide it basically lies in the middle of these two in the middle of these two points so unlike that d by 2 it lies here it either lies here in between these two points or it can lies here from here and to here so here we have the blur image uh, i mean d by 2 uh, we we can get uh, i mean here we get the blur image but here uh, for d i mean it, when we are in the depth of field uh, so we get uh, the sharp the beam is sharply focused just like you can see it here so due to uh, being in sharp focus uh, we can get uh, a well focused image uh, that you can see it here it's right in between the pixel uh, so the pixel size so that's why we get a good image so this is the relations for the depth of field that is d is equal to 4 and 2 10 to the power 5 w divided by uh, am and this should be an uh, micron so uh, what it mean it mean that d will increase i mean if you want to decrease uh, to increase uh, d the value of d so for that uh, we have to increase the aperture size uh, the aperture size here uh, we denoted by a i mean if you want to increase depth of field uh, so for that we have to decrease the aperture size a so here is the aperture size and second uh, we have to decrease the magnification that we denoted by m and we have to increase the working distance uh, i mean these are the working distance is the working distance that we denoted by uh, w so if you want to increase uh, uh, if you want to have uh, uh, depth of field if you want to increase the depth of field so for that uh, we have to uh, increase uh, what we have to increase the working distance and along with that we have to uh, decrease the aperture uh, the aperture size uh, as well as we have to decrease the uh, magnification so that's all we have for this lecture uh, thanks for watching uh, but stay tuned with the next lecture that will be lecture number eight on the uh, scanning electron microscopy uh, in that lecture uh, we will have discussion on the image contrast and scanning electron microscope so stay tuned with the next lecture till then bye bye